you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a few sponsors that not only help to make it possible to produce this show five days a week, but that I'm also genuinely passionate about promoting especially since they're helping to fund all the cool projects we have in the works, such as the Positive Head app, the docuseries that I'm intending to begin shooting within the next year, and whatever else we dream up over here at Positive Headquarters to help spread consciousness across the planet. Now, if you're short on time or just super excited for today's topic and want to dive right in and skip these ads, feel free to fast forward about four minutes to get right into today's show. That being said, I strongly encourage you to listen because the reason I'm passionate about my sponsors is because they've made a huge impact in my own life, which is why I've aligned with these organizations. And I firmly believe they can do the same for you too. The first longtime stellar supporter of this show that I want to mention is Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online with over 8,000 video titles. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. The second sponsor I'm extremely passionate about promoting is Purium. It's no mystery that bringing your mind, body and spirit into balance is necessary if a person truly intends to manifest the greatest and grandest version of themselves. And as of recording this, it's been about mm, four months since I started taking the Purium Core 4 Superfood products every day. And I can honestly and sincerely say my mind, body, and spirit have never felt more in alignment. If you've been looking for a way to easily get superfoods into your system every day with a simple plan that can help you reestablish a healthier foundation and relationship with food, I cannot recommend for you to start with the Purium 40-Day Ultimate Nutrition Plan, which includes a 10-day metabolic reset and cleanse enough. I spent personally months researching Purium before I jumped in, and now myself and over 150 other positive heads have started with the 40-Day Ultimate Nutrition Plan, and many of us have continued taking the Core 4 products on an ongoing basis daily ever since. I personally intend to take them for the rest of my life because they played a huge role transforming my vibrational state. If you decide to do it, it'll cost you just over $7 a day for the first 40 days and only about $5 a day after. But if you do it the way that I recommend you to do it, the smartest and most beneficial way, it won't cost you anything. I recommend you to just look at where you can reallocate money you are already spending on food each day. Essentially, you're just going to swap out the unhealthiest stuff you're in the habit of purchasing in exchange for Purium Superfoods. And this way, it costs you nothing to participate in the transformation and cleanse. And it creates exponential benefit because now you've replaced something that lowers your vibration with something that is going to make you feel super high in the healthiest kind of way. Just take a few minutes, see where you can cut out five to seven dollars a day and commit to doing it. It's that simple. Also for support, we'll be doing a big group transformation with other positive heads and soul family once each month for support. 
So I recommend, you know, going right now, ordering your 40 day ultimate nutrition plan bundle so that you have it when the next group transformation starts. Procrastination is not your friend. Order it now. You can thank me later because I can assure you, you will not be sorry you've decided to send a message to the universe that you're ready to step up your vibrational game and reclaim your health sovereignty. Just head over to ishoppurium.com. That's spelled I-S-H-O-P-P-U-R-I-U-M.com. Be sure to use the code POSITIVEHEAD, all one word, for either $50 off or a 25% discount, whichever is greater. And also, if you want to learn more details about the Purium products, why I'm so passionate about promoting them beforehand, you can go check out several videos I shot discussing these things in greater detail. You can also hear my interview with the very inspiring founder, David Sandoval, much, much more over at positivehead.com forward slash transformation. All right, all you positive heads, here we grow again. So appreciative to be here with each and every one of you yet again to share what's in my heart and mind, connect. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful day in paradise. It's actually raining here in Southern California, which is a is a rarity. And uh, I'm excited. I love the rain. I love uh, a little bit of dramatic weather since we get so little here. <laughs> so yeah, um, feeling great. Hope you are too. And today I'm going to just dive right into uh, a topic that's been bubbling up, um, you know, for me uh, in, in our Facebook group a little bit. Positive Heads is the group, by the way, if you're not in there uh, with an S, it's uh, Positive Heads with an S. It's a great place to connect with other listeners, to ask questions, to share, grow. We truly have, you know, our group is truly uh, just an amazing collection of bright, shiny souls with so much good intention. It's lovely. So we'd love to see you there uh, if you're not already not already in. Um, But uh, yeah, some things have been bubbling up there that are stimulating growth. And I actually did a long post yesterday, uh, a little bit pertaining to this uh, subject. So, you know, as I love to do with the show, what is bubbling up in my life? What seems to want to be discussed or come through to further explore and grow from? And uh, so today, what I want to talk about primarily is the idea of humility and sort of humility versus ego. And finding that balance. And I feel like it's something that we all need to really come to terms with. And, you know, I know for me, um, as I started to have my own personal awakening, re-membering that I'm one with the source that creates and animates all things, I think, you know, I I had to process and deal with a, a little bit of like spiritual narcissism, you know, at, at that time. And like, oh, I am special. I am the one. And I think everyone deals with that to some degree because we're all the one, right? And so m- finding your way through that and getting to a place of, yeah, I'm the one and I have gifts and I have pieces to the puzzle to be sure, but so do other me's and other extensions of the one. And they're just as valid, even if it's someone who, you know, um, let's say they have one kind word to someone that just trigger something at the right time in the right place. They're not even a teacher. They're not even attempting to, to, to teach, you know, this sort of stuff. And as I like to say, we teach best what we most need to learn. And I've sort of doing this all publicly. Right. But not everyone has to do that. Right. You have the people who just, um, you know, who maybe say a kind word, you know, I think of Charles Eisenstein, who was recently on the show and he was talking about, you know, who's more important, Gandhi or Gandhi's grandmother. Right. So um, it's it's really an interesting thing to consider. And it really ties into this idea of humility and r- not getting too sort of full of yourself. And, um, you know, Confucius said humility is the solid foundation of all virtues. John Ruskin said, I believe the first test of a truly great man is in his humility. I'm going to just rattle off a few here because there's a bunch of good ones. Humility is the mother of giants. One sees great things from the valley, only small things from the peak. And that looks like it's G.K. Chesterton wrote that. Rick Warren said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Ernest Hemingway said, there's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. 
this one, I don't know who exactly said it, but I love it. Humility is the greatest quality a man can have. Arrogance is undoubtedly the worst. And so, you know, as, uh, as we sort of explore this idea, and it doesn't mean to be like, you know, not believe in yourself or no. I mean, I, I have more self-confidence than I've ever had. And I've always had a lot of it and it's only grown. Um, and you know, so it's not to, I don't want to ever diminish my light. And I think that's the balance. I think we got to be really careful with it because sometimes that's what it can turn into, right? Oh, I've got to be so humble and I've got to sort of dim my light. That's not at all what I'm saying. Let your light shine as bright as it can possibly shine. That is what it's meant to do. But you know, balanced with a dose of humility, understanding that you are, you know, (laughs) when you really understand, like even from a physical uh, perspective, how, what a speck uh, we are, right? Our, both our souls and our, it's like this divine dichotomy. It's like what, you know, relative truths, what, what perspective are we speaking from? From one perspective, we're in a physical body and we're very, very, very infinitesimal, infinitesimally, small chips off the block of source right in this current state now at some point we slide back up the scale and probably look through the eyes of you know the 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 very top of that mountain right and uh i think that that is a, a very very important part as we explore this topic of humility and ego and you know i think what happens with a lot of people as they find their own power and their own gifts it's you know i know i have definitely been guilty of it in my in my past and uh where it's like i'm i'm trying so hard to like convince others it's like you know my greatness right and i don't really feel the need to do that anymore i feel like i've grown through that for the most part not to say i couldn't have those moments you know there's always further refinement and, and whatnot but um you know, once you really understand who and what you are, you don't need to let your actions speak for themselves. You don't need to ever sort of prop yourself up and and sort of, you know, constantly be um, trying to. It's like it, it becomes a thing of like, who who are you trying to convince? Right. <laughs> uh, ultimately, when you do that sort of thing. And we've heard, I think it's Shakespeare says, thou protest too much when someone is like denying something too much. It's like, hmm, I don't know. Like, yeah, you seem kind of guilty. I like to kind of take that and spin it. Thou profess too much. Like if you're just constantly professing your greatness, it's like, hmm, who are you trying to convince exactly? And, you know, ego, uh, I've heard it said, of course, edging got out or everybody's greatest obstacle and so you know on my own journey with uh with this subject and and i've certainly have an intimate uh i've had an intimate journey and ride you know feeling into my own tremendous power and also tampering that with humility the more i know the more i realize i don't know and you know one of the things that I, i look to do is you know i had a great experience uh having a company with you know over a hundred employees at one time. I've had hundreds of employees at this point. And, you know, the more the company grew, the, I was just so unconcerned. There was so much ego stuff that was happening in politics. And I was, you know, the founder, the original founder. And it's like, I could care less. People would ask me what I did. And I'm like, oh, I'm the janitor. Like, I, I just didn't, I didn't like, it didn't mean anything to me to be, you know, chief executive officer. It's like, I don't know. It's just not, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It just doesn't feel that cool. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's because I truly know and love myself and, and know what I'm capable of. And I, I don't need like a, a fancy title or, you know, a lot of ego uh, gratification at this point. And, um, you know, that's why currently with my current company, I'm really exploring this um, this uh, business organizational model called Holacracy that is all about like, you know, it's uh, a flat organization and the CE, there is no titles, there is no CEOs, people have roles and things like that. And so I really, really like that. I really, uh, I think that's the future of um you know, uh, of business. I think it's the future of our, you know, for our own development is just, you know, tampering your, your, your greatness with, with a good sense, a strong sense of humility. It makes it so much more attractive. I remember one of my old, my old business partners who had a, has a lot to learn. Not, we're not even on 
good terms at this point. Some of you've heard this, some, you know, the story, but there's also like, like all of us, there's good, there, there's wisdom within everyone. And he had some great wisdom at times. Uh, he definitely is the person I've seen in my life who taught best what he most needed to learn for sure. Um, he takes the cake with that one. But one of the things he talked about, I remember one time I, I slipped into a moment of like trying to prop myself up, build my, well, here's what I've got, I can do and this and that, you know, and he's like, and talking about interacting with either employees or someone outside of our organization, I can't remember. And he goes, he said, Brandon, let them figure that out about you. It's so much more powerful. And I was like, ah, oh, you're right. You're right. I don't need to sell myself, right? And um, I believe energy speaks volumes. It's all energy. I just saw a post by Bruce Lipton the other day, and he said, you know, we're all communicating through energy. I haven't read it yet. I saved it, but that's so true. Everything is energetic. Everything is felt. If I'm swarming to get people to, um, you know, be testimonials for me, that energy's felt. It's like it's, it's sort of manipulative, right? It's not necessary. It's like, or if I'm, um, if I'm, you know, whatever my angle is, whatever my intention is, all of us, it's always felt. So, you know, just allowing others to figure it out for themselves is such a powerful, powerful thing to do, knowing that we communicate through energy. What you say is so much less important than the energy that's behind it, because that's in the more sensitive we become, the more we feel it all, right? Um, I know with me, it's like, man, my intuition, it's like, I saw something the other day that said, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't have the quote in front of me. I, I should have saved it. It's so good. It, it, it said something to the effect of intuition is a result of trusting yourself and believing in yourself, right? That healthy self-confidence. And so you take a look at something like that. And, you know, um, Sylvia Clare said intuition is the highest form of intelligence transcending all individual abilities and skills. Einstein talked about intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a, is a, is a faithful servant. So as you trust and, and, and have healthy sense of self-confidence with yourself, not, you know, seeking to validate or overinflated ego stuff. It's like all of the energy is felt of whatever someone is putting out. So there is no, um, you know, anyone who is, is sort of doing those things, they're not really fooling anyone because it's all, especially someone who's at a healthy, developed, balanced place in their own evolution. It's, it's all felt, right? At this time, I think uh, what I'd like to do is take a quick moment uh, to, well, it's, a, it's a little over 10 minutes, pretty pretty decent little clip here. Um, it's Wayne Dyer, one of my all-time favorite teachers, uh, certainly has transformed countless lives with his beauty, grace, humility, wisdom. And this clip is called Humility Versus Ego. I found it on the Promote Fernando YouTube page. Uh, let's take a listen. It becomes the rose. I mean, it's that whole thing that the Tao teaches us, isn't it? That out of the invisibleness, out of the nothingness, out of the space that uh, has no name, it's the space that's uh, doing nothing, but leaving nothing undone. The Tao does nothing and leaves nothing undone. And you, you are from the Tao. I'd like to just, for a few moments, speak about one more thought. I'd like to see you work at changing. To change the thought from, notice me, notice me, to what Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu calls living in obscurity, becoming more obscure. We live in a uh, celebrity-obsessed world, don't we? Look at me. Notice me. The Tao teaches something completely the opposite. Listen to the 66th verse of the Tao. Water again. The sea stays low. And because the sea stays low, all of the rivers and all of the streams empty into it. Because it stays humble. Because it stays in that place of just allowing everything to come to you. He was trying to teach us the important lesson of uh, letting what we know is coming come to us. I practice this so much more now in my life than I did at one time. I can remember years ago, I, was, uh, I had written a book, 
called Your Erroneous Elms back in the 70s. And um, <clears throat> it stayed on the New York Times bestseller list for something like 27 months. And <clears throat> each, well, many weeks it would be number one, and then it would go down to number three, and then it would go to number two, and down to seven, and all of that. And I was doing The Tonight Show in those days and on a regular basis. and. Uh, so many of the other shows, the Merv Griffin and uh, Phil Donahue and Dinah Shore, I became like a regular on the Dinah Shore. I was like, you know, hobnobbing with Burt Lancaster folks and, uh, you know, just, uh, and um, what you do is you call and f uh, find out where you appear on the, uh, on the bestseller list for the following week on Wednesday. So you call up on Wednesday, not for the Sunday coming up, but for the following week. And I called home, and my ego was pretty strong, and I was very much into a lot of notice me. I, I really believe that true nobility is, is not about being better than anyone else now. It's, it's about being better than you used to be. <laughs> and I think I'm better than I used to be, and just about, I mean, I know that I'm better than I used to be in every quality or every characteristic that I hold to be valuable. Um, but in those days, I was into notice me. And I called home and I had trained my wife to uh, call the New York Times. She had this special number that she could call and with a certain code and she could find out where I was going to appear on the bestseller list the following week. So I called her up and I said, uh, where am I on the bestseller list next week? <laughs> you know, I was out in California doing something and she said, uh, you're not on the bestseller list. I said, what are you talking about? I was number one on the bestseller list last week. I said, my, even my voice changed when I said, well, <laughs> what do you mean I'm not on the bestseller list? She said, you're not on the bestseller list. I'm sorry. She said, your book is on the bestseller list. <laughs> Big distinction there, isn't it? Between believing that this is me and recognizing that... Uh, you can let go a little bit of, of, that, of that. Listen to uh, verse 66 of the Tao. Why is the sea king of a hundred streams? Because it lies below them. Humility gives it its power. That's a very important principle to understand. And I live on the ocean, right next to it. It's my front yard. And always I watch it to learn something from this thing called the ocean, which is the most powerful source of life that we have on the planet. Without it, there's no life on this planet. And because it stays low, so what does this have to say to us? Do you have the capacity to get past that ego need to always be saying, notice me, look how important I am. I mean, there's been a proliferation of this lately with this celebrity silly stuff, isn't it? I mean, CNN is doing you know, full hour shows on, uh, on silly little things about what happened to this particular celebrity or what happened to that celebrity, and the celebrity's never even done anything. And it's, uh, there's all of this talk about it, and all of the new magazines. I mean, and you look, you go into, through an airport, and you look on the newsstand, and all the same photos, just with different magazines. I don't even know what, what the names of all of them are, but there's like this huge market now that we have for people to get into a state of notice me, notice me, notice me. And how much do we train our young people, particularly in our schools and so on, that the one who is the star is the one who gets the most attention. The one who is uh, the most important and the most valuable is the one that has uh, the most people liking them and so on. This constant obsession with needing to be noticed. When in fact, what I have found for myself is the the happiest moments of my life are when I can do it low and slow and not have anybody out there even know what I'm doing. To be able to, I mean, Louise never would have uh, advertised the fact of some of the things I talk about with her generosity. She does it anonymously. It's almost always done in those ways. No, look at me, look and notice me, how important I am and so on. So much to learn from that kind of wisdom, from that kind of inner connection to the Tao, the ability and the willingness to say, to do it anonymously, 
to say that you can just get done almost anything that you want to get done if you don't become obsessed with taking credit for it. Remember the movie The Magnificent Obsession? Yeah. The movie made back I think in the 50s. And it was really about what was the magnificent obsession? It was the ability to be able to give anonymously. What is Alcoholics Anonymous? It is everybody stays anonymous. Nobody has a title. There's not even anybody in charge. There's nobody, there's no leaders of this. There's no president. There's no vice president. There's no organization. There's no, it's just, here's, here's a group of people who just want to help other people whose lives are out of control. So here's a meeting place. And you come and some, so one day somebody will, uh, will chair it and then somebody else another day will chair it and one of the things I found that when I attend one of these meetings um, <clears throat> is that I, I feel you'll see so many people who are downtrodden who feel as if their life has passed them by who look like they don't have any teeth they haven't shaved they're they're dirty they're um, God in disguise Mother Teresa was asked the question about what she does when she was in Calcutta and she said every day Every day, I see Jesus Christ in all of his distressing disguises. All of his distressing disguises. That you can see this source. You can see the Tao. You can see it when, particularly in those who are the most obscure, the most uh, isolated from everyone else. And whenever I go to one of those meetings and I hear people get up and they tell their stories, uh, they... I, I always, I feel that, I feel there's so much presence of the source, of God, of spirit, of Lao Tzu, of the, of the sort of Tao, whatever you want to call it, in one of those meetings than I've ever felt in any church. I've, I, I've never felt the presence of it more. And I encourage you, any of you watching this right now, go to one of those meetings. You don't have to be an alcoholic. You don't have to. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't call myself an alcoholic. I was never out of control. I drank, but I wasn't out of control. And I, uh, but I still go to those meetings. I have people in my own family that have struggled with addiction, and I go with them. And I sit there and I listen to those stories, and I just, I get shivers down my back when I think about how beautiful it is to be in the presence of people. All they want to do is help each other. There's a movie called My Name is Bill W. James Woods plays and Jim Garner, James Garner is in it. And uh, he, his life just got totally out of control with addictions, totally out of control. And then he went to a, uh, uh, he, he, he went to one of these meetings and he began to realize, and he said, we can, we can actually take these, uh, these people and all we have to do is all we have to do is love them all we have to do is and he's so excited about the concept of being able to go out there and and offer it and I keep referring to Louise because she's such a hero to me um, there was a time back in the 80s when our president wasn't even able to say the word AIDS was he I mean he could come on and here was this lady who before this thing became the worldwide phenomenon that it is was having meetings in her own house and, and going and, and bringing these people these downtrodden people who had been labeled outcasts in society and offering them a place to learn how to love each other and to care for each other this was long before there was any celebrity status associated with trying to end this horrible crisis that our country has and our world has, has had. There was uh, James Wood so excited about the idea of we can create a place where we're anonymous. Nobody has to know anything about us. We don't have to say our names. We don't have to say anything. We just have to come there and we can help each other. And before that happened, everybody who got out of control with addictions, particularly with alcohol, would... Uh, would die. There was no cure. There was no cure. And where did they find their cure? They found it in being anonymous. They found it in being obscure. They found it in having no organization. They found it in having no elected representative. They found it in having no rules. There are no rules. You just come and we care. If you've been one day or one hour sober, or even if you're drunk, you come. We care about you. And you are not that alcohol. Who you are is this divine soul. In the 36th verse of the Tao Te Ching it says, the gentle outlast the strong, the obscure 
outlast the obvious. Try to become a little more obscure, a little less interfering, a little less notice me, a little less, you know, one of the specific kinds of things that you can do is just as you're about, when somebody else is talking, just as you're about to interject what you've been thinking about for the whole time, waiting for them to stop talking, <laughs> just as you, to just stop and to bite your tongue and say, tell me more. Or, that's very interesting. I have never heard that point of view before. Even if they totally, completely disagree with everything that you stand for, to be, to be willing to listen, to be able to stop, practice it. I practiced it when I did these verses of the Tao. I practiced it every single day while I was working on that. Just staying obscure. And for me, that's not always so easy because of just being recognized wherever I go. And if I saw someone who was about to recognize me, I would just put my head down. I would just walk a little bit past them like something. Right now, I just want to be anonymous. Right now, I want to be obscure. The Tao says, storms always end. Verse 23, fierce winds don't blow all morning. A downpour of rain doesn't last all day. Who does this? Heaven and earth. You're already connected to everything you want or need. It will come to you at the exact perfect time as the rivers and the streams come to the ocean at the perfect time and place. You gotta trust. You gotta know. It's going to come to you. You don't have to chase after it. You can become a little less obsessed with your ego and your self-importance and who you are and what you've done and you can get so much more done and you know what it's the most peaceful and sweet delicious way it's like the song that Cecilia was singing about the rose thank you so much and God bless you I love how he, uh, you know, referenced uh, the Tao Te Ching so so much here, and I, I I've heard this clip a long time ago, or the, or the whole talk that he gave, and I, I believe what he did is he took different verses from, you know, Lao Tzu's writing in the Tao, which is, uh, you know, older than the Bible, I believe, and uh, and lived them each day, tried to embody them, and this is sort of like him giving it a, a talk about the the humility piece and how you know what what he gathered from from doing so. He talked about change the thought from notice me to living in obscurity. Well, you know, he used to, I used to have it framed uh, on my wall, this particular uh, Tao quote, why is the sea king of a hundred streams? Because it lies below them. Therefore, it is king of a hundred streams. And you guys have heard me say it. It's one of my favorites. It's uh, the, the humility is what gives it power. And, you know, he kind of talked when he was talking for a moment there, he's talking about letting things come to you more. And that made me it made me think of the surrender experiment. Right. Like letting things just flow to you. You don't need to force or sell your way into anything. Let let it come. Right. You don't. You, it will all flow to you. It's as funny his his story of, you know, <laughs> look, his wife like put him in his place. Your book is on the bestseller, not you. Uh, it was funny. You know, and just this general premise of, do you have the capacity to get past the need to say, look at me? And that's, it's back to this energy thing. If someone is saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, how does that feel energetically? Take someone like Louise Hay, talk about transforming people's lives and by the boatloads, like uh, anonymous generosity. You know, I remember hearing uh, Wayne Dyer talk um, once about Carlos Castaneda giving away all his money, leaving it in a phone booth. I heard him tell that story like, and it was like, you know, very anonymously. And he didn't even advertise the fact that he did that. Like, that is incredible, right? I saw a fortune cookie when you don't, and he referenced something similar, I believe in this. He said, when you don't care who gets the credit, there's no limits to how high you can climb. You can really do anything, right? If you don't become obsessed with taking credit. And it's always important, like everyone, you know, if they say if you want to really see someone's character, see how they treat someone who can't do anything for them, right? Uh, Mother Teresa said, I see, you know, Jesus in all of his distressing disguises, um, you know, and, and this is all, or as Ram Dass put it, everyone is God in drag, even those who seem, you know, completely unimpressive from the, the cover of their book, if you will. The Tao said, the gentle outlasts the strong, the obscure outlasts the obvious. One of the things that definitely when we talked about was, you know, 
not interjecting so much. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. <laughs> I've been working hard on that in my interviews, especially because I get so excited with what I want to say and just being more patient, allowing others really listening. That's another one that I think I can definitely work on more. And I think all of us, a lot of people can some, I, you see some people who are really good at listening and it's so impressive and their presence is once again, the energy there is so powerful when they're doing that. What are they doing? They're being humble in those, that moment. They're allowing space for the other. And, um, and then the, the, the energy that's felt, the presence that's felt and what a powerful way if you're if you're ever trying to win people over you know it's talk about the path to least resistance allowing things to flow to you uh you know they say speaking of you know sales and that sort of thing one of the things that is the most effective um things to do in sales is to allow the other person to talk and, and tell you all about themselves and what they're doing and what they think and and the more they talk about themselves the more they like you and so it's like what a what a wonderful way to win people uh by, because you're if you're actually people want to be heard right people enjoy being heard it feels good to be heard and when you are creating the space for that to happen for someone and receiving them with your energy truly and fully super super powerful well as we wind down today what i would like to do is uh on the outro here, I'd like to take a, a quick moment and just read something that I wrote yesterday. As all of this sort of stuff was bubbling up for me, I wrote a message that I shared with someone about all this topic, this whole topic. And, and you know, ultimately, it's a message to myself, too, right? And all of us. And then I ended up sharing it on the, on the Facebook group because we can all learn and grow from the the information the insights that i'm sharing in this post i believe certainly myself so i ultimately originally wrote it to someone and sent it to someone then i actually you know posted it as i wrote it to myself because you know it is all me it's all reflections anything that's bubbling up to be processed is doing so because it's a reflection of you in some way so here it is a message i wrote to myself uh this is from yesterday morning and um I'll just start reading here. This is a message I wrote to myself this morning, processing and further clearing old programs of competition and the need to ever seek validation. I felt inspired to share it since much of this applies to all of us, all L O V E U S. <laughs> uh, I believe I got that one from Chris Jackson. Thanks, Chris. I like that one a lot. <laughs> I see the greatest and grandest version of ourselves as never needing to make someone else wrong so that we can be right. Because we understand that this only perpetuates further separation. We understand there is more than enough room for all of us and that each extension of self out there co-creating transformation in the world is playing their equally important role perfectly and that we owe them our respect and appreciation, especially if they have teed someone up to dive deeper with us. We understand that the moment we stop seeking validation, we are validated. In fact, we always, two words, always were validated. We just believed the lie that someone once told us that we weren't enough. So we thought we had something to prove and had to constantly convince ourselves and others of our validity. I see the greatest and grandest version of ourselves as always understanding that when we are fully in the flow with our power, it will be felt without a word. In fact, we now understand that too many words aimed at self-validation actually opens the door for the opposite to be considered. We relax about all of this because it is exhausting. We no longer try too hard with anyone or anything. Instead, we flow with grace, ease, and humility, always trusting that our gifts will be delivered exactly on time to whoever is an energetic match for our unique expression of love. We relax into the knowing that our unique expression is not always ideal for every person either, because different flavors call for different toppings. Besides, we know that we are more than enough, so we don't need to be the best or only topping. I see the greatest and grandest version of ourselves showing up how we would imagine the Buddha or Jesus would step into the scene of a party, a powerful, radiant being, letting their presence say all that needs to be said pertaining to the magnificence of who and what they are. And so it is. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed 
writing it and feeling into it and using it as a creative outlet to clear old programs and further clarify and to grow. I so appreciate each and every one of you. I do have a song to leave you with. This one is uh, actually Daily and the Alien, former co-host um, of this podcast, who still uh, edits and releases uh Every, every day. So we owe a big, big appreciation, love to Dalian for, um, you know, putting this out and editing and putting this out each day. Um, him and my, uh, him and I were in a band many years ago. And then after that, um, him and my brother formed a band called The Variants. And it's such a brilliant album and it never even got released. Um, but there's a song on it called between the lines and i've always loved it uh the lyrics that my brother wrote and who by the way is working on music now he's really dive, diving into ableton and producing music and it's very much in the in the style that i love i mean him and i are very close so i'm super excited i'm sure i'll be sharing that sooner s- sooner than later sometime in the coming months as he as he starts to put together an album for the first time in a very long time but yeah him and dalian both uh, i wish dalian would do the same thing hint hint because they're both so talented as songwriters and um you know, as you can hear in this in this track, um, and if any of you guys want to go hear the rest, uh, I think if you search the variants on uh, SoundCloud, it's up there. Uh, I put up put it up there a couple years ago. But anyway, this one is called "Between the Lines," and a lyric my brother wrote: "Humility is the key word when faced with these lessons. None of us are immune." Till next time, hope you enjoy journey. Well, love you all. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. question Humility is the keyword I'm faced with these lies